Hey there YouTubers, today I'm going to share with you a project I've been building on for quite a while and that is my new sniper rifle. It is based on a JG VSR-10. I've put a tremendous amount of time and love and effort into getting it to shoot the way I want it to shoot and it's finally there. The farthest range I have at my house that I can shoot is 262 feet and last week I stood one of my boys out at the far end. He agreed to it, I didn't make him do it but it was nice fired two rounds, hit him both times. After the last one, he said he was done because it still hurt at 262 feet. That's pretty good. That's what I was shooting for. It shoots consistently at right at 550 feet per second with 0.2 gram BBs, which makes it as hot as I'm allowed to run it at most of our local fields. So with that part done, now I have to move on to the next part, which is making it invisible. The gun is black. And while I love black guns, as you can tell behind me, it does not work for a sniper rifle because black is something you don't really see in nature. Short of bear, black bears, blackbirds, things of that nature, there's not a lot of black things in nature. And therefore, when you have a big, long black rifle moving through the woods, it really stands out. It totally destroys your whole camouflage motif that you built up with your uniform that you're wearing. So I need to come up with a pattern that is going to work well with the environment where I live. I live in the deep south. That means that we have a lot of greens and we have a lot of browns. There's some tans and things of that nature in there, but mostly greens and browns. So the pattern I come up with is going to need to be a predominantly green and brown pattern. And I hope to be able to come up with something that looks really good and is able to blend in well to help me get some better concealment and be just a little sneaky out there on the air soft field occasionally. The sniper rifle is built for those days that I just really want to reach out and touch somebody. Most of the time I'm much more of an aggressive player, much more um, up front. I like to run my SMG which is a Scorpion, ASG Scorpion, and I love to run my M4, which is going to be an a Avalon. You can see both of these behind you, my Avalon and my Scorpion. Those are my two primaries. This one here is going to be for those days where I just want to be a little bit sneaky or I'm hot and tired and don't want to run up and run and gun all day because I worked too late the night before. So with that said, what do I need? The first thing I need is a bottle of isopropyl alcohol. This is going to allow me to get the gun good and clean. The JG model of this has a very rubberized stock which feels great in the hands but it absorbs a lot of body oil. And If I try to paint right on top of that body oil, the paint's not going to last. After I get it good and clean, then I've got my paints and I've got my patterns to work with. For patterns, some things I bought. $1.97 at Walmart. This is a dinner plate uh, placemat. It has a very nice pattern to it, nice teardrop look, so I hope they'll get some great patterns off of. I have also purchased a cheap laundry bag. It has some very good patterns with it as well, and I'm in hopes that with these two things, I can really get some great patterns working and get the gun looking really super. To complement that, we have got several paints to work with. We're going to start with a sand color. After the sand color, we're going to move from there to an army green. After the army green, we're going to move to the deep forest green. And after the deep forest green, we're going to finish it off with some brown. Those are the colors I'm going to be using to paint the gun and to get the look I'm going for. Finally, if I really like it, I'm going to put a clear coat on it to lock it in. The problem with a lot of these primer based paints is they're not super durable. So after you get it painted, if you don't clear coat it, it's going to come apart on you. You can get lots of scrapes and fades and things of that nature. By putting the clear coat on it, it's going to seal it in and it's going to make the paint job a whole lot more durable. But I'm only going to do this step if I'm truly happy with it in the end. So from here, I will come back to you shortly. We're going to start taping the gun up and after we get the ta gun taped up to where all the parts I want to protect are covered, then we'll move on from there. I will see you soon. Okay guys, here we are. We've got everything set up. You can see I've taped over 
the glass on both sides of my optic. I've taped over the wheel here on the optic just because that has the powers listed on it. I don't want to cover up any of that. I've taped over all the writing that I wanted to save, the bolt, the rubber butt pad, because the rubber butt pad's not going to hold um, paint at all. It's going to be way too sticky for that. There's a piece of tape right inside the tip of the barrel here. That's to keep any paint from going down there, and also some tape up in the holes around the trigger area. Don't want any paint to go in any holes this is not intended to go into. Kids, those of you out there in Never Never Land, please do not do this anywhere near your parents' cars. Your parents will murder you and bury you in the backyard if you spray paint near their cars and get overspray on their shiny vehicles. I've taken out underneath my boy's old tree house, set up out here to where we've got plenty of free space, nothing around but brush and some old swing set stuff and whatnot. Nothing's gonna get hurt by this paint. So with that said, I got here where I just set down my can of spray paint at, um, right here. And we're gonna get started. The very first coat is just going to be a light, light misting. So I'm gonna take and just go like this. Very light misting, not trying to get anything significant on here. Getting a little bit of splatter from the paint hole not being as clear as I would like it to be. Ooh, that wasn't good. One more reason you wear gloves. Okay. Let's go ahead and take this glove off since it's now damaged. Let's see if that gives me a little better, better spray. A little better. Just want a light misting because that light misting is going to allow the next coat to stick to it much better. So the first time around, we're not going for a heavy coat, just a real light little misting on the gun. Same thing here. Just giving something for the future coats to bond to. Of course, I also taped over the, uh, the mag well by taking a magazine and sticking that magazine in, uh, tape, putting tape on the bottom of the magazine, just going ahead and putting it in the mag well. And that should be good right now. I've not done a lot to it. Just put a real light coating on it. I do want to get on the bottom side of my bolt here. The goal is not to get it painted yet, just to give something for the next layer to stick to. So from there, we're gonna take a break and come back in a few minutes after that's had a chance to settle in. All right, guys, we are back. I've cleaned the nozzle on my spray cans, but now it's trying to get a better spray. You can see that everything's got nice and dry. It's not smearing when I'm rubbing it. Everything's good. It only takes about 15 minutes for spray paint to get dried reasonably well. It wouldn't be a bad idea to let something cure overnight, but for the most part, to be able to take and just handle a little bit, 15 minutes is going to be able to do all you need. The next goal is going to be to take and put a nice even coat of the sand color. We always start with our lightest color and then we go up from there adding the different layers, one, a little darker and a little darker till we get what we want. We're going to do this the same way we did before where we're just taking nice short even burst like this. Oh look at that. And we're going to do the whole gun, nice, short, even movements. You want to take it easy doing this because you don't want to get any runs. And if you go too slow, if you try or stay in one area too long, I should say, you're going to end up getting runs. And runs are going to ruin your paint job. And we don't want runs. We're going to do nice, thin coats to get where we want it to be. All right, we are back. 
The tan's pretty good. It's still a little wet, and I'm sure you can see the, t the wetness in there, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to spray a little wet paint on a little wet paint as we transition to the next one. Now, after I do this, I'm going to start moving to my patterns. And when I start going to my real um, textured patterns, then I need to let it dry some. But the first, before I do that, I'm going to get a, a nice green zigzag going. Remember I said that where I'm at is predominantly greens and browns. You can look in the trees beyond me. And that's an environment that I'm going to be having my BB warts in for the most part. And I really need to be able to blend into that kind of environment. So, with that said, make sure I get a good mist this time. Oh yeah, nice mist. We're using... Um, Army Green is our next color, still using the Rust-Oleum camouflage paint. And I'm going to take and just do a nice diagonal. And I want that diagonal to be about a hand width across. About like that. And then I'm going to come down, do a zigzag this way. Same pattern, about a hand width across. Do another diagonal this way. Good. Come down to another diagonal this way. Good. Now I need to get down low so I can make sure I'm continuing my pattern across the bottom. Same thing here. I want to continue that pattern across the bottom and across the front of my barrel here. Now, I really don't want to have a light color blasting out from the end of the barrel. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that a shade of green at the very tip. Just because green leaves are where I'm probably going to be shooting her from. And I want that area to blend in pretty good with that. Now I'm going to continue my pattern across here. Okay. Getting under the barrel as well. And let's see, how's the next one go? Next one's a diagonal like this. Getting down. Looking good here. A little hard to see this area when we're looking off into the light. And for this one, I'm coming up. Now I want to take and see where, I believe it went right across here. All right, we're looking pretty good. Now it's time to start adding a little texture. And for my texture, I'm gonna start off using the dinner um, placemat that I bought at Walmart. I wanna hold it really close to the surface I'm spraying. That's gonna be real important. Otherwise, you're not gonna get good solid patterns. So this is an area that you really wanna think about getting yourself some good rubber gloves to keep your hands a little bit less painted on as you're doing it. You got some nice grip going on here. And I'm gonna follow, I'm using a deep forest green this time. And I'm following the same pattern for this as I did for the original green. So I'm gonna have dark green over a light green and just paint that same spot again. And I'm definitely getting the paint on my hand, but that's okay. And when I pick this off, look at that texture. That's kind of cool. That's something a little different. Do the same thing right over here. Let's see if I can get it in here good. Be a little harder to get it tight up in this area. Okay, getting some textures going there. Try and wrap around my scope just a little because I have a little hint of green going on here on my scope okay 
one area i don't like i got a little too much overspray right here so i'm just gonna get my tan i'm gonna touch that area back up just a bit and maybe a couple other spots just slightly <clears throat> That's going to mess up with the pattern I'm going to put on that area. Same thing here. I think I need a new pair of gloves. I think I'm getting some transfer off my gloves. Okay. Alright, now we're ready for the brown. The brown I'm using is this very flat brown finish here. And for my texture, you can see I've got big holes with some nice mesh to it. This came from a Walmart laundry bag. I think I paid about three bucks for it. And this is, should give us a really, really nice pattern. Got my paint can straightened up. And I'm just gonna do this over all the tan areas because look at the gun compared to my background. It doesn't match. So I need to get most of that tan to go away and in doing that get a nice pattern going and hopefully it's going to look as awesome as I think it will same thing over here keeping it nice and tight and take that off and what do we have? Oh, look at that nice snake skin look to it. It looks pretty good. The, the sand's a little sandier than I would really want, but it's not bad. I wonder if I can match it up and tighten up those spots right here. Let's see if I can figure out how to get it lined up a little closer right there. And do that spot again. Okay. Pretty good, I did more harm than good there. Oh well. Same thing here. I'm taking wrap this part of my gun. Like so, that's looking pretty good. Now, come some real challenges. And I think it's pretty close to done. I'm probably going to come back and touch up that scope a little bit. Redo it some. Maybe redo this spot some. Nice part about spray paint is if you don't like how it came out, you can always hit it again. But otherwise, we're looking pretty good here. Not quite as dark as I was thinking, but we're getting there. Oop, definitely need to get the underside of that barrel some. So we can work on that. But anyhow, that's the gist of it. Shows you how I'm working through this. I'll show you the finished product when it's all done. All right, this is how she looks. Parts of it came out how I wanted. Looks really good. Part of it didn't blend quite as well as I wanted to, but for a first time, you know, I can live with that. Still got that orange shining out inside the barrel. You can take my phone, get you better closer look at the pattern that we put on here. Not too shabby not great that black ring i think that it, when i do it again i'm going to tape over just the numbers here to protect the numbers and leave everything else to be black 
Oh, uh, we'll leave everything else to get camoed. I'm probably gonna do it again at some point, but this is a good place to start. And um, give me your comments. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Tell me what I did right. Tell me what I did wrong. I'm always game to learn. That's one of the great things about YouTube is thanks to Al Gore and YouTube. You know, Al Gore invented the internet. But thanks to them, we can learn all kind of great stuff. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you like. And y'all have a great day. Bye.